Hey guys, I'm Voilin and I have been sleeping on a futon for the past four years. Well, a little over four years by now. <laughs> Recently I've been seeing so many YouTube videos pop up about people talking about their first year of sleeping on a futon, their first couple of years sleeping on a futon and how it's changed their life for the better. A lot of people claim that the sleeping on a mattress has a lot of good health benefits. You're closer to the floor so you use more of your whole body to get up. Another benefit that people talk about is it's harder so it's better for your back or your shoulders and sides or for your neck. And another benefit that people talk about is it's compact. Yeah, that, that's, that's a valid statement. But first of all, so what is a futon and how do you put out a futon? Well, first of all, If you don't have tatami, the, the kind of like Japanese flooring, then you'll have kind of a problem with moisture. So what you could do is put a frame, and sorry for the echo right now. Um, what you can do is put a frame so it's kind of lifted off the air and has some amount of like air circulation going through. The problem with the futon is it's kind of thin. If I take the one from my kit, um, this one is a very thin one. Um, yeah. It's just a kit, does not really need much padding, so yeah, let's leave it at that. <laughs> but what would happen if you would choose some kind of like plates to put it on? Sometimes it can sag through because yeah, again, it's thin, it's very flexible, you can bend it in all kinds of shapes. So for a lot of those kind of like bedding stuff, like for like a normal mattress, a futon won't be a good choice for that. If you had to put it on the floor, moisture is your biggest enemy. What we do every single morning is the moment that we wake up, Turn the foot on to get air underneath and we will switch between the two sides every now and then. But basically to put out the foot on, the one for my kids, voila and done. We don't really put anything underneath because he does not really sleep on it, on it at the moment. He still prefers to sleep on our foot on. Plus it's so thin, turning it over, it's not that big of an issue, it dries very quickly so not really a problem. For our foot on, we have a drying mat, um, well drying mat. It's kind of to keep the moisture out. It's, it is very helpful and has the an kind of indicator if I can find it. If it is very blue, that means that it's dry. If it's kind of like pinkish or like fully pink, then it means that it is too moist. So we will put this on the floor first. And this will be smaller than your actual futon. This is what will help to keep your futon moisture free. Now, when we started getting our foot on in the beginning, I was suffering from kind of a painful back. And because of that, we decided to buy a kind of like mattress from underneath. In the beginning, fine. But then it started to losing its kind of like padding. Like on the corners, you can kind of see it was kind of thicker, but yeah, it slowly over time became more flat. And now, I don't know if it does a lot, but yeah. Basically, we just put this on on top. Voila. Make certain that nothing is folded underneath, because that often happens. And we have our not very supporting mattress. <laughs> and then comes the main futon. And the main futon is basically a mattress inside of a cover. And you put an extra cover on top of it, just so it's easier to clean. Probably the better way of putting your futon out, instead of trying to do it at one go, like I just said with the mattress, is Fold it into three. Makes it more compact, makes it more easy to adjust of like in what location you want it to. And then you just roll it out. Voila. One, two, three. And then you have some options. So what a Japanese futon usually comes with is this kind of a like... Um, even though it's summer right now, we don't really sleep with the other equivalent. We obviously put the air conditioning on mainly because of our kit. We're kind of worried that he won't sleep properly and I easily sweat. So we mainly sleep with the air conditioning on. And yeah, Japan, it's kind of a hot place. So for me, I personally use this. This is also a two person, this is two person. We have our own separate blankets because I don't like sleeping with this, I prefer this. And my wife is the opposite. And this is a tarketto. Um, basically, it's a giant towel. That's the best way to describe it. This feels nice. If you don't want to put on an air conditioning, you can put this over you and it feels fresh. It always feels kind of like cool on your skin, which is very helpful. 
And for my kids we just had this tiny blanket because again most of the time he sleeps on our futon under our blanket so yeah. But of course his stuff, his futon, we bought it as a set so the pillow was included, this was included and the uh, uh, mattress itself. They're not really that expensive here in Japan but I know if you try to buy them abroad they can cost kind of a lot. And what has been my experience of sleeping on something like that? Well, good. I can sleep, it's comfortable enough, the stiffness, like the hardness of the floor is something you kind of need to get used to but it went rather quickly within like a couple of days I was used to it because like I had been coming to Japan before so I was kind of used to sleeping on a futon every now and then. I don't really think it's anything special. That's my experience. <laughs> Nothing special to be honest. It's just because I see so many other people making these type of videos recently that I felt like I can throw in my opinion and see what people do with it. <laughs> but so what kind of health benefits do I have from sleeping on a futon? A couple of years ago before I moved to Japan I actually got hit by a truck and since that moment my back has always been kind of like painful but not too painful. But never really had that much, many issues from it, but since I started living here in Japan and started sleeping on the floor, I noticed that it slowly started improving. So, is there science behind it? I think it's just because it's sleeping on a hard surface, which is kind of known to be better. So that has been one of the benefits. And another benefit is I kind of prefer everything close to the ground, like even our living room is basically a carpet with some pillows on it, so... <laughs> and our previous solution was also just a sofa without any legs. The downside of having this kind of like a bat are yeah, moisture. Moisture is your biggest enemy and that's really really a problem. Even when you have tatami, if you don't fold your foot on every morning, chances of mold starting to grow underneath your mattress is a possibility. You have to be careful. So tatami is not a wonder solution. This mat is also not a wonder solution. It helps a lot. So far we've been having this futon now for, well, since I moved to Japan and we have not had any issues. So yeah, as long as you turn it enough, air it enough, you won't really have any issues. During winter it's a little bit more difficult to like hang this um, sheet outside and hang the futons outside. It's a little bit more difficult, so it's still possible. Another downside that we mainly had, we kind of wanted a big futon and bigger sizes are not that common. You mainly have like a single, very common, semi-double, also kind of common, but the moment that you go to double, things get a little bit more complicated, especially when you try to find covers for your, uh, for your mattresses and sides. And why do I have a futon? In the beginning, it was kind of helpful that it saved space. You can fold it up and you have more space in your apartment, but because this is in its own room, like there's not really anything else in this room, except for an empty corner. It, there's not really anything else in here. Flexibility, it's not really needed in this room, but it was necessary in our previous apartment where the space was a lot more limited. Like I'll have the car to my previous apartment tour. But in the beginning when we got this futon, we were still living at my wife's um, parents' house. We did not really have much space there for a normal bed. Also having just a futon is a lot cheaper than also having a frame moving places which we knew that we were going to do a lot in the next coming years and well so far we moved two times so this has been helpful so was it a good decision to get a futon and a separate futon for our kids um i think yes but now the question do you need a futon if you live in japan the prices will be reasonable and you'll probably have more use for it because Spaces here in Japan are tiny, apartments are tiny and even houses are not too big. So if you want to save some space to have a desk in your room that you can actually use, get a futon. If you live abroad, I would not really advise on getting a futon because a lot of people want a futon to relieve their back pain. I don't think getting a futon is the best decision if you live abroad and you actually have space in your house. Just get yourself a bed frame and a hard mattress. On our previous trip to Belgium, my parents, I don't know exactly why, they bought a very, very firm mattress, which was even harder than our futon. And 
it was as comfortable to sleep on as other futons, so they kind of did a good choice by putting that in my old room, but... Yeah, if you live abroad, just get yourself a hard mattress. You'll have the same benefits. You can have a bed frame, so you don't have to worry about moisture the entire time. Yeah, if you have the space, go for a mattress. And th that's basically it. I saw a lot of people making these type of videos, and I have seen a couple of uh, people really... Um, Treating a futon as like a wonder solution, which I find kind of wrong. Especially when you live abroad, just get yourself a hard mattress and it's, you, you will have the same benefits and you won't pay a giant amount to have something like this. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button and maybe put a comment. What do you prefer to sleep on? Have you been to Japan, slept on a futon and disliked it? Because my parents actually, they came to Japan, they tried to sleep on a futon they couldn't. They really couldn't. They ended up putting the futon on top of the sofa to have it soft enough because they cannot sleep on hard surfaces. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.